evening everybody this is clutch here from the sodak motorcycle block uh, first of all i want to welcome you to our very first ever comments and beer episode and basically this episode well first of all the idea that's totally stole this from cruise man's garage he does a little thing called crown and comments well i said do it as comments and beer i'm totally ripping him off and well I apologize, so like I said, this was an original, of course, comment video, comment reply videos aren't a really new or an original thing, so this is just my rendition on it. So basically what we're going to do here with this show, we're going to try to do this once a month. Basically, I'm going to go through YouTube comments, and we're going to, I'm going to basically read the comment. Um, I'm not going to do any fancy production as far as putting them on the screen or anything like that yet. We're seeing how this thing goes. Read the comment. I'm gonna kind of reply to him, and we're gonna move on. So, pretty simple as that. So, let's meet the other star of the night. Um, of course, we've talked about the comments part, but let's talk about the beer part. Now, one thing about the beer part is basically I'm not just gonna use any ordinary beer. I'm gonna try to focus on using beers from local breweries here in this area. Well, tonight's first victim is the Scully's APA from Sturgis Brewing Company in Sturgis, South Dakota. So if you've heard of the Knuckle before, several years ago they started brewing their own beer. Well, eventually they broke the beer part out into its own, which is the Sturgis Brewing Company. So now that we got our beer in hand, let's go ahead and crack that thing open, take a sip or two. Ah, uh, that's that's a good one. That's a pretty good one. So, like I said, it's Scully's APA. It kind of is very similar to most of the APAs you're going to find. Like I said, it's pretty solid, solid beer. And 5.8% alcohol. Not too bad either. So, all right. Let's read some comments. So, now these comments have been picked at random. I went through, like, through, and through all the comments. I want to work to a point where I'm just replying from like about the last month of comments but these are some that we've gone back on so one of my most popular videos was my Amsoil waste of money video and we got a lot of comments from that that is still my highest viewed video pretty much except when it's not except for like during around Sturgis if I got a Sturgis video on there that's gonna be most viewed but otherwise it's this one all the time so we had a couple comments from that so from Mr. 03 Fat Boy, he said, Nice video. Guarantee that Rotella will have the same results. Okay, sure, maybe. But here's what's funny about that comment, and I've got a numerous comments that they've about that where this oil will have the same results, whatever. But you know what never comes with these comments? Never comes someone showing me it, showing me numbers, um, submitting it in. Um, you know, I, I challenge some of you, okay, take a sample with your Rotella and let's see the results and put them up here. Let's see the results. Let's do a rebuttal video. I mean, that video has been up for quite a long time and still, I, I haven't seen much yet. So, you know, it'd be nice to see something, you know, just saying that would be nice to say, you know, nice to see something. Another comment that for you from, let's see, Eugene Lapointe nine one eight one six two hundred nine hundred and eighty miles. Really? So that would be seven one nine zero miles. I'm guessing. Yet your odometer is showing sixty two thousand nine nine zero miles, and he has the the numbers written out. So he he writes out that first bit and puts the actual numbers this bit. Better get a handle on your math or eyesight. Stick to math. Okay, so whoops, I made a mistake. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Um, so instead of 62,000, I said 100. So, God, what a ding dong, huh? This stupid idiot. God, what an idiot. I mean, here's the thing this is what you get for tuning in to a semi, semi novice motorcycle vlogger. Notice how I said semi-novice, as in I'm not even to novice level. So <laughs> that's your mistake for checking into me. So, but all joking aside, hey, sorry about that. Here's the thing: we make mistakes. Okay, that's is what it is. It sorry, 
Thanks for pointing it out. I appreciate you pointing out the mistake. I very much appreciate the uh, the internet fact checkers because they make sure and keep us all in line here. So that's it for that video. So here's another one I found. This is from Iron Butt Run. What I learned, and this is from J Ballen One Two Seven. That's J B A L L E N One Two Seven. So. I'm thinking either J.B. Allen or J. Ballin. I, I don't know for sure. Sorry, I'm butchering your names. I apologize. All right, and this is on mine. So, excuse me, because the comment reads, young 24-year-old girl did a SS-1000 on a 2003 Harley Sportster! Exclamation point. Now that's something to brag about. Doing 1,000 on a Luxobarge wing. Boring. Spelled B-O-R-E-I-N-G. So, first thing, you spell boring wrong. And actually, I'm pretty sure there's some comments from other ones that pretty much said, hey, check your spelling. But, you know, sorry my 1,000 miles on a gold wing is not very exciting to you. My apologies. But what I'll say to that is, you know what? I sell Compass ones, so as near as I can say, you're just an air, a random commenter on the internet, and you know, I don't know, maybe you've done the same, I don't know, but yeah, sorry, there's nothing exciting about me. So here's another one, so we're, now we're getting in some Sturgis comments here, actually, yeah, we're going to, actually, we're going to do one here first, so we did a video, this was pretty, pretty close to after I started, it might have been a year, oh, that might have been three, four months. It was in the spring. So basically what had happened was is my Goldwing was just my Goldwing 15 GL 1500 was stuck with mute. And it just was stuck on mute. And that's all there was to it. And, you know, a few of the things I discussed, I fi I figured out how to do it. I actually published a video on how to do it. It's named In the Garage and uh, GL 1500 A mute switch. Ironically, this has been a very solid performer for me as far as videos go, which I honestly, I figured when I put it out there, I, I figured I'd maybe get at most 10, 12, maybe 15 views. I mean, this was right when I very much started. I thought, yeah, we might get some views. We'll see what happens. Well, this one has been a very good performer for me. So this is actually a fairly recent one. It's from SH Blair. Hope messing with the wiring worked out for you. We really should have disassembled the switches and cleaned them, then applied dielectric grease. Yeah, okay. That okay, that's fair. That checks. Um, but honestly, I wasn't looking to rip apart the wires on this GL fifteen hundred. I mean, as GL fifteen hundred, I wanted to try to avoid ripping apart the wires, tearing apart the whole motorcycle. And the fix for it, you can go back and watch the video, but the fix for the video essentially what I did is I took the mute switch because I in my internet sleuthing, I found out that the issue is it loses its ground. And I didn't really want to go hunting and dinging for wires and finding for, excuse me, looking for the the culprit. So, honestly, we hit the easy button. We found the negative wire off the mute switch, and we ran a jumper off that to the frame, and it fixed the, it fixed the problem like that. And, honestly... That was a lot easier than ripping apart the whole motorcycle. So that's why I went that route. It was just kind of a, you know what, we're going to easy button this. Yes, a lot of times those easy button fixes don't turn out great. Um, but in the end, that's what I did. And yes, it did. It messing around with those wires did fix the problem for me. So it worked out well. I will say this, if you have a JL1500 and has a mute button switch issue, you might want to go check out that video. It may help you out quite a bit so oh more iron butt comments how to do an iron butt run part three prepare so this is joel joel l or joel a h n s t e i n two two eight one i apologize for for uh butchering your names here but uh he said, great video with super explanations and examples. The best IBA teaching video. So first of all, 
uh, you know, you're making me blush here, but no, just in all serious side, I'm, I'm glad that video helped you out. And I've, I've got a few comments like this about those iron butt association videos. And I'm glad those videos have helped people out, help people maybe take that next step in going and taking care, doing your, doing your first iron, iron butt run. So I'm happy to be a part of that. And honestly, the inspiration videos just come like, you know what? I need some comments. This is something I'm going to do. And I'm going to try to break this down for you. So, like I said, I hope that worked for you. You can go check out the playlist that's got the Hire Do an Iron Butt Run playlist. And basically it starts, I start from the beginning of getting things together, making sure your mind's right and all that. And I work all the way through to up to submitting your certs and, you know, all that. So, it's a pretty good series to check out. I'd recommend everybody go check it out. So if you want to do an iron butt run or kind of see kind of where my thought process is with doing iron butt, iron butt runs, I certainly encourage you to check that out. So let's do a few Sturgis comments here to end this episode. Like I said, it's probably going to be kind of a shorter episode. Like I said, got to show the, show the beer again. All right, Sturgis Shortcuts. So, first one from Bam Bam 315 Thank you for taking the time to map out these routes for us. You're welcome. No problem. Uh, Sturgis is one of those towns during the rally where knowing the shortcuts uh, really can come in handy. And I learned this through experience. I lived in Sturgis from, would have been 2005 until... Gosh, what year was it? Whatever year, I'm trying to think what year Winter Storm Atlas was. Um, so 2013. So I lived there for almost eight years. And in that time, I went through, well, while we were leaving, living there, seven rallies go, went on. I think, if I remember right, I went through, actually went through like, geez, how many of them? I didn't go through all of them because some of them were I went through probably at least five or six of them. And one thing about being in Sturgis, when you live there, you got to learn the shortcuts to move around because you just, anybody that's been there will tell you, traffic does not move sometimes in that town. And especially if you're staying on the main thoroughfares on Junction and Lozelle, traffic just does not move. So finding them shortcuts is a lifesaver. And I'd say from one of these, uh, one of these, uh, from this comment here, some of you have taken that and you've run with it and taken that information. And I would encourage you to go check it out. The title of the video is Sturgis Shortcuts. Just search Sodak Motorcycle Blog, Sturgis Shortcuts, and it'll come up. And I explain three or four pretty good shortcuts you can use to get through town. Um, I'm probably going to update that probably here maybe this next year. Um, kind of depends on how things change throughout town. Uh, but, you know, it's definitely one of those things. It, it helps you out a lot because... Excuse me. He's some belching up a storm here. That's probably what I get for drinking beer. I bet if I drank Crown, I wouldn't have this issue. But, like I said, this is comments and beer. Not comments and Crown. But anyways, like I said, that worked out. You know, it was just all I was thinking of content. And like I said, take go to Sir, just learn the shortcuts because they will save you a lot of issues. Now, if you want to go in the first time, great. Don't take, you know do the main thoroughfare but sometimes you just got to get somewhere and frankly if you've been there for three or four days and you're sick of waiting in traffic you're like screw it i'm just taking the shortcuts and once i got to that point once i learned shortcuts my surges experience when i lived there was a much better experience now i will say one thing if you're asking oh well he didn't live in surges oh yes i did um you know there's the broken spot and Right on the northeast corner of that block, there's a little like little big old house looking thing that's got a deck on the back. It's actually a fourplex apartment, and that's where I lived. So yeah, trust me, I lived there, and you can ask my wife because she lived through all of them and had to deal with the not being able to sleep or none of that stuff. And the well, it's midnight, concert's done, but now it's what t-shirt concerts. Awesome, great. Oh, now everybody left at 2 o'clock, but, oh, here comes the garbage truck at 3 o'clock. You know, putting beer bottles in the truck. Clang, clang, bang, 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 clang, clang, clang at, you know, 3 in the morning, along with hydraulics moving. You know, go listen to a, a garbage truck one time, and they're a very loud machine. Well, then at 4.30, the 
the beer delivery showed up, and then the Coke man showed up, and then all of a sudden it's 7 o'clock in the morning, and well, guess what? It's time for Bloody Mary breakfast, and like I said, it's an all-night deal. The place never sleeps. I mean, there may be some sleeping going on, but it's mostly just sleeping off, you know, drunks, or, you know, being drunk, so like I said, now me, I never had that issue because frankly, I can sleep through, I can sleep through a freight train. I mean, I, I was in Iraq that motor attacks had happened, and I'm like, no, I'm just zonked out. Like I just zonk out. That's once I'm asleep, I'm asleep. So definitely not a light sleeper. I'll I'll wake up if I have to. That's about it. So, but another comment on video from Randy K eight six eight five. Thank you. Good video. Good advice. Appreciate your comments there, Randy. So. So here's a, so in also in 2021, one of my first videos, I titled it No Honda's Allowed. Definitely some clickbait. Um, and you can tell because some of those comments, you can tell right away whether they actually like to be or not. Um, you see some comments. I've been there. They love Hondas all the time. Like, yeah, if you actually watch the video, you'll learn pretty quick that that, that whole thing is clickbait. Like it's, of course, Hondas are allowed at rally. Um, but here's from David Breen. He says, yeah, that's cool. Anything goes. My Rebel 500 will look tiny compared to those beggars, but oh well. Yeah, it might. But you know what? Who cares? Because, frankly, you see all kinds of weird things at the rally. Tiny bikes, big bikes, boss hosses, weird, weird uh, trike things. Um, for God's sakes, they, they still let slingshots park in Main Street, which is freaking ridiculous because they're not a motorcycle, but... Like it, like I said, it is definitely a come as you are kind of rally. And like I said, you don't even necessarily have a bike. And frankly, a lot of it anymore, it's not so much that you or it's not so much what you ride. It, it's that you ride. I mean, that's kind of what it is to it. Yes, it is a very Harley Davidson geared rally. It's, I mean, I'd say rally, Harleys are probably easily seventy five percent of the bikes that are there. I mean, they're just. And part of that is they're the biggest brand in America, and they have been for a very long time. So, you know, that's kind of what's geared towards. And also, you know, that's also what, like, most of your parts are geared towards and stuff. So, excuse me. So, for the most part, if you're riding a metric, yeah, you're not a lot of the parts for you and stuff. But still, there's still those things you can sell about being a rider. You know, what, honestly, for me, a lot of it is just going and doing the demo rides riding different brands of bikes that's a lot of fun i mean i own a honda goldwing but one of the best days i had up there was that last friday where i went up and i rode how many did i ride in a day 14 motor 14 different harleys in one day did about probably 240 miles once i figured out the mileage i mean it was it was quite a day but man i had just the time of my life just taking all those harleys out and enjoying it and that's the key to rally it's just finding the thing that you love to do and enjoy the hell of it if you love concerts, well, that's a great place to come because there's concert all over the place. If you enjoy kicking back way too many of these things every night, guess what? You can do a ton of that there. And frankly, you play it right. You stay at one of the big campgrounds that's got concerts. You don't ever have to leave the place. You can just get in there and you can just go get trash for 10 days. You don't even have to bring your bike. You can just go get drunk for 10 days. I mean, there's, you know, if you want to ride, there's decent riding around. I mean, Granted, the riding is not the best during the rally, but if you're someone from like a larger city that's used to a lot of traffic, you're going to come here and the traffic ain't going to bother you because you're used to it. You're just going to see, oh man, there's, look at all the hills and this beautiful scenery and this terrain. You know, that, it's like I said, it's it's a lot of what you make it. And that's when you see, you see tons of characters coming for rally. Um, the best customized bikes coming for rally. You always can tell around here when it's rally time because you start seeing all kinds of weird and cool customizations and frankly they're bikes you would never want to ride regularly because you'd be too afraid of screwing them up but man it is kind of nice to see them and it's also in a way kind of nice that you know our little part of the world here becomes the epicenter of motorcycling and frankly it does impress me that little tiny sturgis rally and races started by pappy Hoyle way back in the 30s has become what it is today like it's 
to me it's quite impressive especially the fact this happened here in our little corner of the world that's basically we're in the middle of nowhere i mean we're in we're in we're very solidly entrenched in the flyover country here but yet during these 10 days we're the center of the universe so it always impresses me it always impresses and amazes me and i think it's kind of cool that it does come here and I kind of, over the years, have become more and more, I want to take advantage of that and want to enjoy that because this is something that not everybody gets to experience. You know, people, like Sturgis is a bucket list trip for people. And I get to do it every single year. Like, every year. I don't, like, I don't have to ride anywhere. Like, I don't even have, if my motorcycle's broken, I don't even have to have the, I don't even have to ride my motorcycle up there. I can take my car up there and I can go walk around and still experience it, you know? So, it's, like I said, it's definitely kind of a, it, it annoys me at times, but at the same times, I also enjoy it. So I tend to try to find what I enjoy about it and stick with that. So here is one more comment, and this is probably going to be my last comment for this program. This one is from Sturgis 2018 Sights and Sounds. I basically spent 2018 rally. This is before I do one, did one every, almost every single day. Like this year coming up, you will notice that I will have a rally or video for every single day during a rally. So I have one, two, three. I have seven, I have seven videos. Six of them that went on during the rally and one of them the day after the rally ended. So I have seven videos just for my experiences throughout the rally and just documenting it. And that's not to mention I also have five demo ride videos that will be coming out later on this fall and into this winter as well. So I got a lot of content from there. But before that, there was still time where I was doing one, two videos a month. And, you know, I was just putting things together. And the Surges 2018 Sights and Sounds is one of those videos. So one of my earliest videos, um, it was kind of, let's see, at that time, I don't think I even had my GoPro yet. So... It was still done on, you know, good old fashioned cell phone, which is what you're watching this on. And so this come from Ken Munoz, ATMMR Railroad 6853. Yes, that name is a mouthful. Excuse me. And his comment is, I'm sorry, but doing this event on a Goldwing is akin to sex with a rubber and <laughs> that like that is actually my wife that, that's actually one of her, her favorite comments that this that this blog has ever gotten and that's why i kind of wanted to highlight here so um if you got kids out there um parents they're all upset right now because i went to that hey i'm sorry okay i like i i i apologize if you're offended but like i said that was a pretty funny comment now here's how i'm gonna respond to that you know Having, having sex with the rubber, um, you know what you don't get if you use that? Uh, you don't get STDs. You don't have an unplanned pregnancy. Um, you know, I, like I said, it they're, they're, it's not so bad going like that, I don't think. I mean, you know, especially if it's you're doing uh, what sta what happens here stays here. Well, absolutely, that's, that's probably your best action for it, so... But yes, it is. I guess I could understand the the point there. Uh, pretty good one there. I guess in the end, I'll just say touche on that one, and we'll move along. So, but once again, parents, if we said the word and you're off and in, hey, I'm sorry. Okay, Jackson, Jayla, or Candy, Nate, hey, I'm sorry, guys. Okay, but like I said, I had to mention that comment because that's probably one of the better comments I've ever received. And, like I said, the first time I saw it, I just had to chuckle a little bit because it was very well written and, you know, like I said, good thought behind it. So, but absolutely. And what else would you expect from, you know, something that you have to have your dad force ones and wear your dad jeans to ride? So, anyways, that is all the comments that I've prepared for tonight. Like I said, we're at about 25 minutes now with the video, so... I don't get want to get too crazy ranting on, losing your interest, and who knows, maybe, maybe, maybe you've long gone, a long time ago. For so for the two or three of you that are still left here, I appreciate you sticking around, sticking around with the Sonic Motorcycle Blog. So 
I will tell you, so pretty much all comments that are left on the videos from pretty much here on out, you can expect to, you know, possibly see those on comments and beer. I'd really like to get to the point where I'm sitting at, you know, doing the, doing the, the most recent comments. Um, I'm probably going to start trying to answer questions more that way than just typing back responses online because I'm really bad at typing back responses. Half time I don't, I it. It's not that I don't want to respond to you. I just, I don't know. I, I'll see it. I'll forget about it. And then all of a sudden, three weeks has passed. And I haven't responded to that. Uh, most of the time, I'll just hit the like button just as an all. It's like, hey, saw your comment. Just want to let you know I saw it. So, but like I said, keep those comments going in. Please leave those comments. Um, also, you can comment on this video too. Leave some comments, uh, just some questions you may have that I can be that can be answered in future videos. Like I said, my goal is to do one of these every single month. Try to do it around that first Thursday of the month. So hopefully we can just keep, you know, hopefully this takes off and this is something we can do every month and something that everybody can enjoy. And, you know, we can hear fun comments like that, you know, the, like the rubbers comment and all that fun stuff. So, but anyways, I'm going to wrap this video here. So once again, I'd like to thank you for stopping by so Sodak Motorcycle Blog and checking things out. We are a blog that specializes in motorcycle related content, especially geared towards Honda Goldwings because I do own one of those. Also the Black Hills, which includes the Sturgis Rally. We do a lot of Sturgis Rally content because honestly it's 20 miles from home and it's the biggest motorcycle event around here. So we obviously talk like that, talk about that quite a bit. But also we do other videos, we do trips, we do all kinds of fun stuff. Um, so I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you dislike the video, hit the dislike button. So, also, feel free to leave a comment. Excuse me. If you leave a comment, though, and like I said, if it's something really dumb and crazy, like, come on, man. Like, you're probably going to get pointed out here on comments and beers. So, just know that right away. By, by leaving a comment, you're basically putting on a public domain, and it's going to come out in comments and beer if it's really dumb. So... I guess that's a play stupid games, get stupid prizes kind of deal. So, um, please comment. I very much would love to see the comments. Um, also, I would appreciate it if you did subscribe to the Motorcycle Blog. Um, you hit the bell notification icon to get alerted of future videos, but I'll make it pretty easy for you. New video of some type comes out every Thursday at 7 p.m. Mountain Time here in North America. So, anyways, for the Sodak Motorcycle Blog... I'm your host, Clutch. I'm going to finish this beer, and you guys have a good night. Thank you.